The Declaration of Independence is a beautifully clear expression of the American mind, but it must be seen to be at the same time an accurate expression of the Catholic mind, medieval and modern. I'd like to demonstrate this to our audience, to quote some lines from the Declaration and ask you to quote a parallel line from your work. And also, if you can offer something in support from Thomas Aquinas, it would help immensely. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll do my best to point out the sources as well. Um, if I don't say otherwise, they'll be from, from my work entitled On the Laity, chapter six and seven. Okay. On the ultimate source of political power, the Declaration of Independence states, and we all know these words, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The laws of nature and nature's God entitle them at it. Uh, I, I stated in my work, the political power emanates from God. Government was introduced by divine law. And Aquinas uh, states, um, and I quote, God instructs us by means of his law and assists us by his grace. Political power is divinely initiated. Even St. Paul proclaims this, all power comes from God, which transforms what otherwise would be brute power into just power, creates the public person with unique attributes." End quote. As to the equality of man, the Declaration of Independence states that all men are created equal. That one's easy. I said all men are equal, <laughs> not in wisdom or grace, but in the essence and nature of mankind. There is no reason why among equals one should rule rather than another. Political right is immediately from God and necessarily inherent in the nature of man. And in the, uh, the Principles of Office, chapter 22, I wrote, let rulers remember that they preside over men who are of the same nature as they themselves. St. Thomas, in his second sentences, said, nature made all men equal in liberty, though not in their natural perfections. On the source of governmental power, the Declaration of Independence states, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. I wrote, it depends upon the consent of the multitude to constitute over itself a king, consul, or other magistrate. This power is indeed from God, but vested in a particular ruler by the council and election of men. And in On the Clergy, I wrote, the people themselves immediately and directly hold the political power. And St. Thomas wrote, therefore the making of a law belongs either to the whole people or to a public personage who has care of the whole people. The ruler has power and eminence from the subjects and in the event of his despising them, he sometimes loses both power and position. 